Hello, I picked up one of these Volantex ASW28 glider models a while ago. I actually bought it about six weeks ago, but it sat in Singapore for three weeks going nowhere, thanks to Singapore Post, which is the worst postal service on the planet. Anyway, this plane um, has a number of firsts for me. It's the first plane I've ever had that has flaps. It's the first plane that has a molded plastic unibody for the fuselage. It's the first plane I've had that has a folding propeller. And it's also the first plane I've had that's this large. It's two and a half meters wingspan, so it's pretty big. The biggest plane I've had until now is the Mini Talon, which is, I think, 1.3 meter wingspan. So one wing of this glider is about the same length as the whole Mini Talon's wing. Anyway, since the weather is warming up here as we move into summer, I've been thinking about trying a proper sailplane kind of a plane. And I made a Vario thingy with Arduino a while ago that I wanted to use with this as well. So that's uh, going to go in here and I'll show you a little bit of using that at the end of this video. So this is the price that I paid there. A little bit more than I like to for this kind of thing. Usually try and keep it under $100, but it does come with motor and all the servos you need. Actually six servos because there's flaps. And it's in quite a built up state already, which I didn't realize, which is very nice to see when I took it out of the box. Um, so you can look at this page here and as you can see, uh, some guy on the internet has done lots of videos about this already. I seem to be copying some guy quite a lot lately. I assure you it's just coincidence. Anyway, that's all the details there and I'll show you what it turned out like for me when I got it. Right, I've just taken everything out of the box and had a quick look at it. Fortunately there was no damage whatsoever. In fact, even on the box, this is about it. So they were quite careful in shipping this one, that's nice. Um, there's a bit of paint scraped off there. That's about the only damage on the parts that I can see, so quite pleased about that. Everything seems straight and true. Uh, so I thought I'd just show you in what uh, level of assembly it, it comes already. So there are hard plastic pieces in the horizontal stabilizer. Spars are in there already. Um, quite stiff. All of the hinges are very stiff on these. Vertical stabilizer has servos in there already, and again, hard plastic mounting parts on the top and the bottom. And this one, actually that one's not so stiff. Uh, box of parts over there, haven't really looked at that yet. Winglets, um, so it's mainly in here. Wings are all nice and straight. And servos are in there, so that's servo for flaps, servo for aileron bars in each of those uh, control surfaces there. Uh, the servo wires are all brought out to here for you. There's some tape along the servo wires. The spars seem to be aluminium from what I can tell. Because if you look down here, uh, might not show up too well on the camera, but that is, that's metal, isn't it? It's not carbon fiber or anything and the spars that you get to go through the fuselage are also aluminium as well, so there's two there, quite short but I guess if they're going into those spars there it doesn't really matter too much as long as there's a, a bit of a connection to about here it seems like it's going to be okay and that big spar, I don't know if we can see that here but uh, no that's probably not, not going to show on camera but the there's a small spar which comes to about here, and then this long spar comes to here. So it's within about 20 centimeters of the wingtip, and then at this point this spar kind of takes over and goes all the way practically to the end of the wingtip. So it seems like it's going to be quite a sturdy wing, even though it's slender and long and thin. Uh, and like I say, it was all nice and straight, and these again, these are very, very stiff. All of the control surfaces come with that little um, mounting hole piece uh, made already. Yeah. Uh, so the fuselage. Let's have a look at this. Uh, where am I going to put it? Put it there. Okay, so this comes with the servo cable extensions just going out to each of their locations so we've got two going out there and two going out here they're labeled they're just labeled channel one channel two channel three etc but that's enough to let you match them up at each end uh, there's some plywood platforms in there the ESC is inside down the bottom 
There is a little uh, inductor coil. No, uh, what are these called? Damn it! You know what I mean. RF. Uh, the, no, no. <laughs> to, to stop spikes in the power coming from the ESC. Whatever you call it, I forget. And it's there. And then there is an XT60 connector with about that much space, so you could put the battery easily up there or down here. There's a bit of uh, double-sided Velcro there, and then another Velcro strap there, and then the motor is in there. So it's all, all, most of it's all ready to go. And the motor is, if we can just, no, that's probably not going to work. It says Volantex, Volantex RC B4023. 850 kV. Uh, so it's actually quite large. I don't really think I don't really think it would have needed to be that large. Then again, it's not a super light plane because it's fairly large, and this piece here is quite heavy as well. It's uh, plastic molded, and again, this is also perfectly nice and straight. I was pleased to find out. If I can just hold it so that it actually looks straight, looks good to me. Uh, so, yeah, glad everything's in shape after all this time waiting for it to get here. Alright, I've just finished building the plane and setting everything up. It was probably one of the easier builds that I've done so far. As you saw at the beginning, everything was mostly, well, all the important parts were mostly already put together and you just have to click the rest into place. Uh, the only place that you need glue was here. I used Gorilla Glue on that, but there was actually some glue in the kit, which I didn't realize until later, so I could have just done everything with what was in the kit because there was a little screwdriver too, which I used, and uh, basically you didn't need any tools extra than uh, what was in the box. And the glue was, amazingly, the glue was usable too. It hadn't all dried up like they usually do. I was going to use a 3S2800 milliamp hour battery, but I couldn't get the CG to go nicely with that. It was too uh, nose heavy, so I'm using a 3S1.4 amp hour, so it's uh, just perfect on the CG at the moment. Uh, FSIA6 receiver, one one of the what's names antennas is there, the other one's here going like that. I might put them somewhere else later, but just for now, that's where they are. Um, that's a 40C battery, so it shouldn't have too much trouble with this. Oh yeah, a couple of other things. I did set up some flaps, but due to the radio that I'm using not being very uh, versatile when it comes to mixes and trims and everything, I'm just going to have to use the flaps as a switch, a three position switch, so it's in the middle at the moment, and that's up, and that's down, and it doesn't go down as far as I'd like. I'd like the full range of the servo to be all on the downside, but uh, unless I'm missing something, it's a little bit tricky to do. Uh, another thing I saw online, a lot of people complained that this canopy would fall off, so I put a bit of tape on there. Other than that, everything is just as it came out of the box. So no wind. I would kind of like a bit of wind actually, but uh, oh well, here goes. That was full throttle for the first bit. Oh, it's bumpy. Oh, it's twitchy, I know. Actually not sure if that's me or if it's the wind there, but it's twitching around more than I thought it would. <laughs> See that? I didn't do that. It just sort of kicked over to the side all of a sudden. So I'm thinking I could use some more Expo. I do actually have some Expo in, but not that much. Obviously now we know which way the wind's blowing. Look at that. Throttle is at about one third. Let's fly past. Motor off. The motor was actually off, but it doesn't have a brake by the looks of it. See if I can stall it a bit like that to make the motor stop first and then glide. So hopefully that stopped the motor, I'm not sure. No, it didn't. <laughs> God, the motor just wants to spin. Yeah, that motor is going the whole time. <laughs> 
that's not the swooshing noise it's supposed to make because of the prop spinning. I want to hear just the wind rushing past it, you know? <laughs> That'll have to do for swooshing noises for today, I think, until I can figure out how to make that ESC stop the motor properly. Actually, if you keep the speed up, it's not so bumpy. Boy, the rudder really works. This is the first plane I've had where the rudder really gives it a nice big kick to one side. Hmm. See if I can do a super fast swoop down from that height. Okay, here we go. Ah, that prop is... The prop spinning really stuffs up the super speedy swoop that I was trying to do. Alright, I'll, I'll just have to do a swoop with the motor on, I think. Here we go. Yeah. Handles a lot better at speed. This is full throttle. Full throttle all the way. Okay, battery started to beep. Better bring it in for a length. Oh shit. Oh boy, hit the tree. Okay, I'm going to have to land it right now because the battery is not happy. Well, there we go. That was a good start. Uh, seems to be working all right. Very easy to get up and running, quick and easy, and reasonably priced too, I think. Uh, I don't think I've seen really what it's quite capable of yet with that prop the way it is and also on a day twilight sort of getting a bit cool now so obviously no thermals to be had but um, yeah I'm looking forward to having lots of fun with this on hot sunny days in the future. I discovered that if I put my Runcam 2 on the top of the tail, I could actually use my 2800 milliamp hour battery, 3 cell that is, and get a nice balance of CG. So I'll show you some video of that while I'm sort of summing up my thoughts of this plane at the end of the video. Um, and I've also overlaid some audio that I recorded from the Vario, so I've just recorded that in my goggles, uh, my, the DVR inside my Fat Shark goggles while I was flying and I've just matched up the audio to this video so it might not match up perfectly but it's pretty close I think. It was a nice sunny day, quite warm but unfortunately also very windy so I couldn't really get any nice solid thermals although I did get a very good one just one time which I'll put right at the end of the video. Um, apart from that though it wasn't too great because when I found some lift I had to turn around to get into it and when I, as soon as I turned around and went downwind I'd get pushed sort of a hundred meters downwind and I couldn't really you know turn around to circle into the thermal so I had to just stay facing into the wind the whole time and just try and catch it as best I could there. 
So that's what we're looking at here, and the run cam takes a pretty good picture of, as usual. Unfortunately it's wobbling around a little bit, I just put a piece of double sided velcro underneath it and then some tape over the top of it, which is not the best way to do it, so in future I'll find a way that doesn't sort of let it jiggle quite as much as this. So with the 3S 2800mAh battery and a warm day with some thermals around, I was able to get 40 minutes flying time from that battery and if I remember correctly it was about 18 minutes or so with the 3S 1400mAh battery. So my overall thoughts about this plane at this point are very very good. I've flown it for about probably close to two hours or so. Uh, I got quite a good sunburn actually that second day when I was flying it in the sun with my face looking upwards for a good 40 minutes to an hour at a time. Um, so I was quite glad that today it was raining and I didn't, <laughs> didn't want to go back out into the sun anyway. Um, it's easy to fly. I think it's um, pretty easy to fly for something that's quite large. I was a little bit intimidated by the size at first but when, when you throw it in it gets up in the sky you actually forget about how big it is until you do one of those swoops down close by and then as it approaches you suddenly re remember oh yeah gee this is a big one <laughs> um, good flight time as I mentioned um, something that I noticed about this that a lot of my other planes haven't done too much is it really feels the air as it should I mean a glider if you expect it to ride up, ride up on warm air uh, it has to feel the air so as you're flying around you really do sort of feel every little bump and sink and rise in the air which is uh, a good thing I suppose but uh, it's a little bit uh, tricky for me to get used to at first. Um, it can be quite fast if you want it to with low drag and everything but it all can also quite go quite slow as well so it's fairly versatile in that respect. I found that once I got the prop spinning problem under control it was a lot better to fly and I think that the prop spinning with that drag being at the nose of the plane was the problem that I was seeing the first day in that it tried to turn its nose aside from the wind so if you put it going flying into the wind it would sort of try and turn itself away from the wind if you know what I mean so that was rather annoying but once the once the prop spinning issue was solved it didn't, didn't do that anymore the spoilers and flaps work pretty well it's a noticeable difference when you switch between them um, to be honest, if, if you handed me the transmitter and you didn't tell me whether it was in normal or flaps down, I probably wouldn't be able to tell, but you can definitely tell the difference when you flip the switch. Uh, and spoilers on the other hand, you can tell, I would be able to tell if it was the spoilers were up when you gave me the transmitter without telling me which, it, which position it was in, because it does drop a lot of height quite quickly. So that's all working fairly well. The rudder works great. Uh, and it's quite nice to be able to do a swoop so you swoop down and then you go up again and then you kick the rudder to the side and then swoop back down the other way it's quite fun it works well the ailerons and the elevator on the other hand don't really have quite the effect that I'm used to especially from flying a flying wing something like the Texuma or whatever um, so I quite often got into the situation where the wind or some some sort of a breeze would kick the plane over quite quickly sort of almost to a 90 degree angle within a second or so and the ailerons just weren't quick enough to counteract that so for that reason it's a lot easier to control when you keep more forward speed because it doesn't seem to kick itself around quite as much when you have a good bit of speed going so overall I'm enjoying it quite a lot so far and uh, when it stops raining I'll be out there again either with sunscreen on or with some FPV camera set up in there so that I don't have to get my face burnt. So uh, that's all I have to say on this for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.